Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're starting a new build, 1913 Duesenberg. I kind of gave you a little bit of a head start on it or a preview of it in the last video when I went to the Phoenix Art Museum. So we're starting on the frame now, uh, getting a good start on it. I've got a little bit of the fabrication done and a little bit of the planning, so I'll show you what that looks like now. I think we'll do this in two series. The first part will be the frame, the second part will be the body. And uh, building this for my dad, he's 72 and had a bit of a mishap with a table saw this year. So he's got two bone fingers. He didn't lose them, but they definitely got messed up. So he's hurting a little bit. So I'm helping him out with uh, some of the fabrication on this. And then I'll turn it over to him for the fine part. So uh, let's get started. So when we start the build, we kind of look at a inspiration car. In this case, 1913 Duesenberg is a black and white picture. Some call this a 1914 because it ran in the 1914 Indy 500 with Eddie Rickenbacker. So kind of going through the design process, we want to capture the spirit of the car. And I was struggling with whether or not to Z the frame. So I got the Z kind of drawn in here. You see that a little bit in this picture. There's a little Z there. And back here, it's really hard to see in this, but there's a Z back here as well, or kind of a rise, more or less, kind of right there. Um, so this is what it looked like without that Z, which would be kind of okay. It'd be simpler to build. Uh, so I'm going to push myself a little bit on this, and we're going to go ahead and Z this thing. Um, so I kind of worked on a couple different designs of the chassis. Uh, these aren't the final. This is kind of the final one over here, and I'm modifying it as I go because things aren't quite painting out because the Z is... Um, I put the angles in the wrong spot. So anyway, I'm fixing that now in the drawings. Not a big deal though, it's all gonna handle out just fine. And this is kind of what it should look like when we're done, or kind of a close approximation to that. Um, so in working on this, designing the Z, I tried a few different things. First I notched these, I'm doing an inch and a half Z, so notching these panels and putting them together. And this is just really, really hard to get these cut with a an angle grinder and make them fit to where they're uh, gonna be square, plumb, and straight. So and uh, the belief that the simple is better. Uh, what we've done is just we're gonna lay this, the, the offset inch and a half just like this, and I'm gonna cut some notches, and the notches are gonna basically, or wedges are gonna create this. So I'm gonna put a wedge piece here, and a wedge piece here, which will kind of look like, roughly like this, sorry, roughly like that when we're done. So I gotta cut those next. I've already cut the front of the frame to get this nice, swoop that's on here, uh, trying to capture that. So with this notch, uh, we're gonna have a, a shackle basically right here, which will be flush to the bottom of that frame. Um, so I've notched the bottom of this about one inch up, kind of carried it back and then start a slight angle down to zero, which is about 18 inches roughly to here. And the front of the, uh, but I cut in a uh, radius. And to do that, I did a uh, template, I made a cardboard template. So it's gonna lay on there. So there's gonna be a piece of round tubing in the front right here to, well, you can't, it's not in that picture. But anyway, there's a round, on the actual car, there's a round piece where the bolt is on for the, for the spring shackle. Um, so I've got some one inch filler material that has to go in here, so I got some flat sheets. And I went over to Dennis Thomas's house the other day, and he kind enough let me use this uh, bandsaw, so we cut some one inch strips. This is 16 gauge steel, uh, or I guess it's roughly 16th inch thick. And uh, we'll fill that in later. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off until I get the pipe bit put in here at this point and then continue that in so it all kind of becomes one piece. So kind of the next thing is I'm going to cut these wedges and weld this part of the frame and then we're going to do the same thing back here. This is roughly 40 and a half inch long piece from, let's see the measurement, from here over to here. And we're going to do our best to keep this thing straight. Um, I think it's going to work out and we're going to make it work out. So the next piece we go down here, and this is where the motor's gonna mount. This isn't the piece, it's just a mock-up piece, but it's about right like that. And then the axle will mount right around here somewhere. So anyway, and here's the other pieces over here on the table. These are already cut, ready to go. You see all that? There's a lot of cutting and grinding and making sure they all fit and make sure they're all straight and square. So this will be kind of a fun project. Hopefully it'll turn out looking all like this. Okay, so this is how we're going to approach the Z. So we cut all these little wedges, made a little template of paper. I'm just sitting here right now. So it's an inch and a half offset and it'll slide right in there. So time to weld her up. Okay, so yesterday afternoon we welded these, these uh, front Z sections up pretty well. My dad stopped by and he helped me lay it out and weld it up. It turned out pretty good. Uh, my welds got progressively better and better. I see some of them are a little bit, a little bit uh, high. This one's got a nice penetration. See this bluing around it? It really tells you that it's really gotten proper amount of heat in there. And um, 
You see this side even better. Uh, we'll smooth this off on the exterior side, which is this side. The interior side, which is this side, which has the line in it. I'm putting that to the inside so you don't see that. Because sometimes we'll shadow through on paint and this will be exposed. So the inside area will get less grinding. We're just going to smooth it off so when the aluminum floor is mounted to it, it won't be a problem. So this one's already been kind of smoothed off on the inside. Um, that's about as far as we'll go on that. Um, anyway, so it turned out pretty well. We rolled it all around it. I just need to clean these up a little bit. Next section will be to do the same treatment down here on the ends where we put the tail section on, so, or the, not the tail section, but the motor mount area, which is on the drawing would be this area down here. So after I clean these welds up, I'm going to go ahead and figure out where the axle needs to be mounted. We'll drill those holes and then weld this, that uh, back section onto the frame. Okay, so I've measured out where the rear axle is going to mount, which is, uh, I've already marked it and centered it, inch and a half from the top, inch and a half from the sides. Um, so this bearing, the Sousa bearing, and I don't have it with me, but this is the mount that comes with it. This is about two and a quarter inches uh, diameter. So when I've looked for these hole saws, I could not find a two and a quarter. So I've got a two and three eighths, which is slightly oversized, which is okay, because the two and a quarter is pretty tight. Um, so we're gonna drill a two and three eighths inch hole on the outside with this, uh, it's a Milwaukee hole goes. I think I got it at Lowe's or maybe Home, Home Depot. Actually, this is Home Depot. I think this one might be Lowe's. I think Cobalt was from the Lowe's. Eh, I could be backwards on this. It's been a couple of years. Um, and the inside one is going to be an inch and a half. You could probably do an inch and a quarter, but it'd be really tight because it's a one inch diameter axle. So an inch and a half gives you a little bit of clearance around it just in case things are slightly misaligned. And uh, usually they are just because the angle of the frame kind of splays out a little bit. Sorry, splays out a little bit and the axle is going straight across. So it's going to be a little closer on one side than the other. So that this works fine. Uh, all of mine are done with the inch and a half size and it works just fine. So that's what I recommend using. So I got a pilot hole drilled. I'm going to do the big one first and it's going to plunge all the way through to the other side and hopefully center the other one for me so that when I drill the other side it will be lined up just fine. Uh, you can probably do that with a pilot hole as well. Okay, so those holes are cut. I uh, had a bit of a challenge. My Harbor Freight drill kept heating up. So I switched over to my big Harbor Freight drill. And I haven't used it in a long time. And it, it looks like it got wet at some point. But man, that thing's got a ton of torque. It cuts really fast. But right at the end, <laughs> it wants to jerk your arm off. And my right arm is, I don't know, bruised a muscle or something. Kind of hurt. Anyway, got those two holes cut. Now to uh, cut the other side. And uh, we can get back to welding on this thing. Okay, so before I weld up the last of the, the Z part where the uh, axle mount goes, I decided to go ahead and cut off the cross members off the back just because these things were very long. That's still pretty long. Um, it'll be cut probably around here when we're all said and done, but once the chassis and the motor's in, then I'll, then I'll shorten those up. For now, I just need two cross members, one at the front where the foot where your feet go, and this other one is going to be right behind the seat. Um, this front was 15 inches, and I'll show you the drawing I came up with. Uh, this has kind of been a work in progress. I'm kind of modeling it after my existing cart. So the front of the frame is going to be 15 and a half or closer to 16 inches. Uh, this front cross member is going to be 14 inches back uh, from the front. And that's to give the axle room to move. If you put it on top of the axle, sometimes your axle will bottom out a little bit and your foot box will interfere. Actually, the foot box, because it's mounted on there, will interfere with the axle. So you want that back about an inch from where the center line of your um, uh, swing of your front axle is going to be in case you bottom out. So this is 15 inches on the inside, 17 inches to the outside of the frame rails. Then the back here, this cross member is 18 inches long, side to side, 20 inches to the outside of the frame rails. And uh, that's about what my existing card is. So that should give us uh, enough room in the seat area to be comfortable. And of course, it's going to be wider as it goes back. Um, I'm hoping it's not too wide if it is when we Z it back, not Z it, but relief it here and kind of pinch these back together. So we'll do and working on that here in a bit. Alrighty, more to come. So when you're cutting these, you want to make sure that you uh, use a Sharpie or something and they cut right on the Sharpie lines. And that way you make sure you've got it exactly right. So I've sharpened all, all four sides here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so the reason I cut it like that, uh, go around all four different sides, if you try to cut all the way through and then cut down this side and down that side with this uh, handheld saw, sometimes you end up with a slight angle and it makes it not square any longer. So we want these to be square as best we can. I'm going to relief them a little bit too because there's going to angle in it. But anyway, we want them to start off as square. Um, so that cut pretty flat and square and true. So that's why we do it that way. Okay, so we're all set to uh, go ahead and tack the weld this one side on the last. This is the passenger side uh, frame rail. Actually, this is the driver's side frame rail. Excuse me. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing tacked up. Okay, so lesson learned, so on my other frame rail, I went around a little too fast, got the metal a little too hot, and it, it wants to pull up a little bit. So the trick is, go around slowly, get it tacked up, tack up both sides, let it cool down in between um, before you come back and finish weld. When you do finish weld, it only runs small amounts at a time, don't get in a big hurry. You get in a big hurry, then the thing is ended up uh, moving around and warping, we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to let that cool down for five or so minutes and I'm gonna unclamp it, flip it over, tack the other side. Okay, so this is just those uh, tacks I just did. Prior to flipping this over, I wanted to show you what, how much tack I put on. It's not a whole lot, just hopefully enough to kind of stabilize and keep it together. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp it and flip it around and start on the other side. All right, ready to tack up side number two. Okay, so I'll show you exactly what that looks like before I sand off or rope, wire brush off the excess. So I, that, um, this material I used to clean it or to, uh, I, you saw me dip the, the thing into, nozzle gel. This is just designed to keep it all clean in there so all the spatter doesn't stick. So once you clean that off, that little bit of carbon goes away. Sorry, I shake at the camera everywhere. At any rate, so we'll let that cool off and come back. Uh, and finish weld it. Okay, so the back of the frame rails were done. I've already kind of smoothed them off. Um, on the outside, the inside left proud a little bit. Uh, the inner uh, support rail will go about here. So this one's here will be mounted right about here. That'll also help to reinforce that a little bit more. Uh, the front ones are also welded and ready to go. So I think I'm gonna call that the end of this video. Uh, this is just a Z, uh, how to Z a, a cycle car frame. Um, but this is not the only way to do it, it's just how I did it. Uh, this is not necessary if you're not going to be zing your frame. If you're just going to do a straight frame or a standard frame, you can skip all this. Uh, then the only thing that it would be beneficial to you is probably just drilling the holes out. So, uh, just doing a couple different things on this one, uh, hopefully pushing my talent and skills a little bit to get a kind of a cool result. Hope you like it. The next video we'll do the front end. We're going to mount the um, shackles for the springs and we're going to fill these pieces in. Uh, complete that and then after that we're gonna put it together. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something I think I learned something. I think I learned quite a bit on how to do this uh, Putting these Z's together. Maybe not a common method for cycle car building, but I think worthwhile So thanks for watching and uh, we'll have more to come soon on the 1913 Duesenberg cycle cart Have a great day